let us see some basic connectives and truth tables. So suppose P and C, Q are the propositions with the truth value 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Then P and Q will be 0 for P and Q, 0, 0. For 0, 1 also it is 0. For 1, 0 also it is 0. Only for 1, 1 P and Q will be 1. So which indicates that for P and Q, both P and uh, Q must be true. Otherwise, if one is true, and the other is false or if both are false then p and q will be false next p or q for p or q to be true either p or q or both can be true then p or q will be false only when both p and q are false then p x or q it is true when both are opposite that is p is true and q is false or P is false and Q is true. Otherwise, it is false. Next, P implies Q. So, P implies Q or if P then Q is false only in the case when P is true and Q is false. In all the remaining three cases, it is true. Next, P if and only if Q is just the complement of this P x or q so which implies both p and q must be either false or either true then p if and only if q will be true next some basic connectives and truth tables if we extend a compound statement is called a tautology which is represented by t0 if it is true for all truth value assignments for its component statements and if a compound statement is false for all such assignments then it is called contradiction which is represented by f0 and if a compound statement is true for some assignments and false for some other assignments then it is called contingency so tautology and implications they are used to describe the valid argument and will help to prove the mathematical theorems so examples for tautology p if p then q or p so here you will not get a condition when p is uh, that is here the left hand side is true and the right hand side is false so you can say that this is a tautology so for all values of p and q this whole expression or a statement compound statement will be true next is contradiction p and not of p and q so here for any values for p and q this expression or a compound statement will be false because either p will be true uh, either p will be false or not of p will be false so that the and of this will be always false next so we can see that our argument or reasoning will be so you will have various propositions which are all we call it as the premises and if all these are true which implies q which is a conclusion is also true so which here we can say that the argument starts with a list of given statements called premises which are represented here by p1 p2 pn and a statement called conclusion of the argument which is q so what is the meaning here is if all your premises are true so we can arrive that q will also be true which is a conclusion so what how we can prove this uh, here is we examine the premises p1 p2 pn and try to show that this conclusion law q logically follows from these given statements that is we try to show if each of pi less than or equal to i less than or equal to n is true then q is also true if any one of p1 p2 pn is false then irrespective of q the implication will be true so that is here we can observe if any one of p1 p2 pn is false then irrespective of q then the implication is true so here 
you can see that P implies Q to table here. It is false only when P is true and Q is false. So if P itself is false, then irrespective of whether Q is true or false, we can see that P implies Q is true. So consequently, if we start with the premises P1, P2, Pn, each with 1 and find out that under these circumstances Q is also has a value 1, then the implication is a tautology and we have a valid argument. This is how we will prove that our uh, conclusion arises from the premises P1, P2, Pn. So, here we can see the logical equivalence that is laws of logic if we continue p q are the propositions with 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and not of p will be 1 1 0 0 which is a negation of this column next not of p or q will be so this column or this if any one is true then this column will be 1 so here yeah, not of p is 1 so 1 here both are 1 so 1 here both of 0 then only it is 0 and here q is uh, 1 therefore it is 1 and also we know that p implies q to table which is uh, false only when p is true and q is false so this you can see that from these two we can see that p implies q is equivalent to not of p or q so this we write it as the uh, logical equivalence and we use the symbol here left hand side one statement is equivalent to the right hand side statement yes to so the left hand side could be this and right hand side could be this so the two statements yes one and yes two are equivalent when yes one is true if and only if yes two is true and when yes two is uh, yes one is uh, false if and only if yes two is also false so let us see some laws of logic. So we can see we have seen that right now P implies Q is equivalent to not of P or Q. And the second one is that P if and only if Q is equivalent to if P then Q and if Q then P. That means we can arrive from Q from P and P from Q. Then we say that P if and only if Q. And this P if and only if Q is also equivalent to we know that P implies Q is nothing but not of P or Q. So this is replaced by not of P or Q and this is replaced by not of Q or P. The next is P X or Q is equivalent to P or Q and not of P and Q which is nothing but P or Q and not of P or not of Q. Next is P or Q is equal to P or Q and not of P and Q which is nothing but P or Q and negation of P or negation of Q. And here this is called exclusive or symbol. We can eliminate the connectives uh, implies and if and only if from the compound statement by using this equivalence statements and or not is a complete set. So let us see the De Morgan laws. So De Morgan law says that negation of P and Q is equivalent to negation of P and this and will be changed to or and this negation will applies to Q also. So negation of bracket P and Q is equivalent to negation of P or negation of Q and uh, Another is that here instead of and you replace by or and here the or will be replaced by and. So where P and Q can, can be a simple statement or a compound statement. This is called as a De Morgan law. Next is distributive law that is P and Q or R is equivalent to P and Q or P and Q. R. So, this we call it as distributive law of AND over OR. Next is OR over AND. The same way here in this expression, replace AND by OR, OR by AND 
on both the left hand side and right hand side. So, we will be getting the second uh, distributive law as P or Q and R is equivalent to P or Q and P or R. The next is law of double negation that is negation of negation of P is equivalent to P. Second one is De Morgan's law which we have already seen. Next is commutative law P or Q is equivalent to Q or P. So that means I can do R of Q with P or P with Q it is the same. And similarly P and Q is equivalent to Q and P. Next is associative law where you have three propositions that is P or Q or R is equivalent to P or Q or R. And the same way you will have for and also. Next is distributive law. This also we have seen. This is distributive law of R over and 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 over R. Next is idempotent law where P or P is equivalent to P and Another uh, item important law is P and P is equivalent to P. So, you can observe uh, P or P either both P will be true or false and that only will be the result of R. So, it is P and the similar way P and P either both P will be true or P will be false which is the result of this hand operation. So, this is called as item important law. Next is identity law. So, that is P or contradiction is equal to P and P and uh, this is a tautology which is equal to P. So, here because it is false, so the result of R of uh, the false with P is always depends on P and here since it is true, so, the result of and depends on P, so which is on the right hand side. This is called identity law. Next is the inverse law, that is P or not of P. So, if you observe one, either P or not of P will be true. So, the result will be always true, which is a tautology. And if you apply the same uh, P and not of P, one of them will be always false. So, it is always false, which is a inverse law. Next is domination law. P or true that is nothing but here uh, when you are using or if it is all one of this is uh, true then the result will always be true and uh, when you are using and if one is false the result will always be false this we call it as domination law. So when it is and the falsity will dominate this P and when it is uh, or so this uh, tautology will dominate P. And next is the absorption law. So, P or P and Q is equivalent to P. So, here Q will be absorbed. That is P or P and Q will absorb Q. As a similar way, P and P or Q will absorb Q giving the result P. So, we will stop here and we will continue the next in the next video.